Uh, thanks very much, Jeremy. Um, as Jeremy quite uh, rightly pointed out, I'm uh, a bank manager by day and uh, by night scaffold user. So um, it doesn't normally come naturally to me, but um, it is uh, a passion of mine. So um, just to give by way of background, um, I'm a founding member of Scaffold. I personally use Scaffold to manage my uh, personal investments as well as my family super. And uh, look, prior to Scaffold, my investments results tended to uh, roll with each new fad. And uh, But now I typically wait and uh, take my cues from uh, business value appreciation as opposed to uh, share price gyrations. And, and I suppose Scaffold, and the reason why I love it so much is that um, it allows me to sort of review large amounts of information quickly, uh, weed out, I suppose, the businesses that have poor economics and focus on the ones that uh, you know have growth uh, in the uh, future years. Now, I tend to use Scaffold uh, for initial stock selection and then sort of back test uh, my expectations on you know, growth and return on equity. Um, I basically use Scaffold as a check method uh, to, to do this. Um, the only thing I would mention is that I, I typically do err on the side of caution in terms of um, the forecasts. Uh, typically analysts which uh, put the forecasts up, obviously uh, it's consensus and, and I typically discount that to some degree. Um, but, in, uh, but in summary, so I bought Coden around February of 12, yeah, around there, it was about $1.37 at the time. Um, and look, the, the reason why I suppose it sparked my interest um, initially was, obviously it was rated uh, A since, or A1 since 2011. Over a number of years, the net cash after ops had exceeded net profit after tax, had minimal debts, uh, return on equity of over 20%. The other, I suppose, softer issues were around, you know, management's focus, understanding the industry and, and the communications tended to, uh, well, I suppose, bode well for shareholders in that the language that they communicated in their, in their announcements was around, you know, shareholder return um, and value and so forth. So I, I tend to take keys from that. Uh, just moving forward as to, I sold out uh, my position in Coden in March 13 at $3.83. Now at the time, um, that was probably just off the peak, yeah, somewhere around there. Uh, at the time, it was below the forecast earnings for this financial year. However, the consensus forecast for FY14 and 15 were, were lower at the time. Uh, return on equity was declining based on those forecasts uh, and the metal detection product that I suppose Coden has been renowned for in terms of their competitive advantage was somewhat um, susceptible to counterfeiting um, in their largest market being Africa. Um, so following a large run in the share price, um, I decided to sell out. The other components, I suppose, I, I use Scaffold to initially look at the stock and do the stock selection, do some back testing on what I think is uh, reasonable before I purchase. And then from a selling perspective, I use Scaffold to, I suppose, uh, initially gauge where the expectations are around the growth are going forward and then use some, I suppose, uh, qualitative aspects um, over and above that. So. Looking at the uh, declining uh, forecast at the time when I sold, there were some other points that um, I had read and, and reviewed, I suppose, just generally about both the economic conditions and, and so forth. So um, if you looked at their FY12 results and their year-to-date results for December, the metal detector division sort of represented about 55% of total revenue, which increased to about 67% in the year-to-date to December. The majority of that growth um, on review appeared to be driven by um, the Mine Lab metal detectors uh, product, which obviously has a competitive advantage, and, and Roger's written about this, and so has uh, Russell on the blog, in terms of um, 
terms of being able to uh, locate gold deeper in the ground than rival products and also it can distinguish gold from other types of metals. What, and I suppose on review of that information and reading those articles, um, whilst on surface it looks like that the product has a competitive moat, uh, the main demand for the product was uh, driven by a high gold price which at the time was probably about $1,800 US an ounce and also uh, Africa was going through a gold rush at the time. The other couple of components, I mean these aren't really, um, I suppose I don't base my whole decision on this but um, at the time I did look at it. So the uh, the gold price against uh, USD, so there would have been a likely negative impact from a declining gold price uh, which may impact the, um, the business and the demand for the metal detectors. Um, and obviously the main driver of the gold had been predominantly speculative off the back of QE um, and also the interrelationship between uh, the US and their improving economy is obviously going to increase the USD uh, and hence dropping uh, the gold price. And then subsequent to that um, there was an article that was written back in uh, I think it was October of last year by Tim Kelly uh, from Montgomery Investment Management just in terms of um, how hard gold had rallied over that period, um, which I thought was quite interesting. So I sort of, not that I based my decision solely on that, but just use it as sort of a, a litmus test or a back test against my thoughts around um, scaffold and, and the forecast assumptions that we used at the time. But in saying that, um, Chris and I were talking about this before, there appears to be, obviously with the market uh, coming off slightly, there appears to be some good bargains in the market. So thank you for your time.